Hi, I'm Jill from H4RL. Thanks for joining me for this week's game review. This week we're going to be looking at Ion. It's a fun science game where you'll learn some chemistry while having fun playing a card game from Genius Games. It's not too complicated and has two different levels of gameplay. So we'll check it out in just a second, but before we do, make sure you hit subscribe because if you like to use educational games in your homeschool or classroom or even just at home on a weekend, we review a lot of educational games here. All these games you see behind me, either I've already reviewed on our channel or I will review them soon. So you don't wanna miss anything. Make sure you hit subscribe and like and all of that. So here's what you'll find inside the box. Right now I have the game set up for the basic gameplay. This is the score card where you're gonna keep track of the score for the game. So each player will choose a color and they'll put it on zero for the start of the game. The game is played in three rounds. So at the end of each game, you will count up your score and then keep track on here. So here's nine, 10, 11, 12, kind of goes backwards this way. Let's say maybe I earned 22 points in the first round. So I would stop right there. And maybe I have two other players playing with me. We end up like this. Second round, we'll do the same thing. We'll add on the score to the second round to what we have right now. So eventually you may end up with a score that's 50 or higher. So you flip your tile. So if I had 50 points, I would be right here. It would look like that. If you can see there's 50 on this side of the tile. The other side just has a little eye atom icon. So I would be right here and in order to go like right here I'd be at 53 points. Okay so that is how we keep track of the score for the game and again it's played in three rounds. So each round there are going to be three compound cards laid out on the table for everyone to see. These are the remaining com compound cards. There are nine total in the game so that we have three for each round. Here's our element card deck. We're not going to be drawing from that during the game. We're instead going to save those and use them after this round in our subsequent rounds. So for this round, I've already dealt out eight cards to each player. We're imagining we have three players here. And here is our rule book that comes with the game. We don't really take turns in this game. It's just played in rounds. So it looks like all my cards, but one are upside down. Okay, so each player is going to pick up their cards. There we go. And I'm gonna take a look at my choices here. So this is what's called a card drafting game. So basically I'm going to keep one of the cards that I have here. I'm gonna put it face down in front of me until everyone else has chosen their one card from their hand and put it face down in front of them. Then we're going to flip our cards over all at the same time and then pass the cards we have remaining. So let's look here. I have two positive Na plus ions, so two sodium ions that each have a positive one value. I have an OH negative that has a negative one value, that hydroxide ion. Actually, I have three of the sodium. I have two fluoride ions, each have a negative one value. And then I have two helium atoms. And helium is a noble gas. So that means this scores two points all by itself. Now, if I can get two different noble gases collected, I can get five points. And if I can collect three different noble gases, I can earn nine points with those. So I could choose to keep one of these noble gases or I can keep one of these other ions and in order to score points with it, I'll have to then later collect something that will make it neutral. So if I choose to keep one of these negative ions, I'll need to keep a positive later in order to make it a neutral compound. Or I can keep a positive and plan to keep a negative later. So there are two heliums here. There's a good chance that when this hand comes around, I'll have another shot at getting one of those. So I'm gonna wait on those. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this OH negative. 
I'm going to put that in front of me, actually face down, sorry. And then I'm going to have my hand ready to pass. So each of these players is also, we're just going to randomly select for them. They're going to select one card to keep. And now we're all going to flip at the same time. So they're keeping a calcium with a positive two value. So they're going to need a, a negative two value or two negative one value cards to play on this one. Okay, so here's what everyone has kept. Now we're going to pass our cards one player left. So I'm gonna receive this deck of cards, this hand of cards. They're going to receive this one, and this player is going to receive what I just had. So now I'm going to look here, and I know that the length of this game, we go until there are only two cards left in each player's hand, and those are discarded. So I will get this hand back. So let me see. There's not a lot here with a positive one value to help me get points from this. But I remember there were two helium in the other hand. So maybe I can plan to get one of those later and go ahead and keep one of these neons now. And then I'll have the two different noble gases worth five points. So I'm going to do that. I don't think I wanna do this positive two magnesium. I just don't feel confident quite yet even though I do know there are a lot of negatives coming because I'd have to get two more cards to go with this or a negative two. And I cannot combine this with different things. So right here I have two negative CLs, chlorides. So I could do this because this is positive two, negative one, negative one together make negative two. This is a neutral compound. This would earn me points if I could collect all of this. I cannot, though, do this because I have two different negative ions combining to balance with that magnesium. That's not permitted in the game. I would not be able to do that. So for this round, I'm going to keep that noble gas. I'll put it down in front of me until everyone else is ready. Let's see what option they might have. for balancing out this calcium. Ah, here are two negative OHs. That's probably gonna be their best bet is to go ahead and start working to gather the negatives they need. So we'll have them keep one of those and we will randomly select for this person. Sorry, person. Okay, so then we all turn over the card we decided to keep at the same time. And if we are bonding them, oh, this person got lucky, look. Na is a positive one. F is a negative one, so they can make sodium fluoride. If we're bonding these like this, I have to lay it down that way because it can't be changed later. They can't be moved around. I do want to put this hydroxide with the calcium, so I'm going to lay that there to bond those. So this one now is earning points, or will at the end of the round because it's neutral. This one yet does not qualify because it still isn't balanced. It's not neutral yet. And here is mine. That is not getting bonded, so I'll lay it separately. Okay, so once again, we all pass our hands to the left. Check out the cards. I forgot to mention, if you happen to be listening to this podcast on Spreaker or wherever you get your podcasts, and you want to see the game, check us out on YouTube. You can find it there and see the components of the game and what I'm talking about. Okay, so I do have some positive options here for balancing with my OH, but look, there's an argon. And I know that helium's coming back in this next hand, so I'm pretty tempted by that. I think I might go ahead and keep that argon because then I'll be able to have nine points. And I probably will be able to find something positive to balance this out. Let's hope so. Okay, well, Choose a random card here, a random card here. Everybody flips. So this person, theirs are balanced right now. They're neutral, so this one will have to be separate. Okay, here's a great example. I cannot add this here because these are two different negative ions. So even though it would balance this, 
I can't use it there, so I'm going to have to lay it separately. And I have two noble gases. They're not really bonded, so I'll put them separate, but they're right together. All right, and we will pass our hands. Now I have three positives, which are very tempting to go with this, but I think I want that helium for those nine points. So I'm going to keep one of those. Hope I can find a positive later. Let's see what they have. Hmm. So if I do the positive two, I'll need two to balance with that. Do you remember another negative fluorine? They've already kept one over there. I don't think I want to risk it. So we'll just keep a noble gas, and since I know I'm waiting for that helium, I'm going to be nice to myself and not take it. <laughs> Let's see. We have a positive right here. I can keep the hydrogen to go with the chlorine. And we're getting down to not many choices left, so everybody flips at once. I have my three noble gases. This person now has one. And I'm going to bond those. So here's another neutral compound that will earn points at the end of the round. Pass our hands. All right, let's see. Uh-oh, I don't have a positive to balance this out here. I'm just going to keep one of these Cl negatives, chloride atoms. Hope I can balance it out eventually. I might keep a positive here and hope I can get a negative to balance it. Oh, and look, I can, I can keep this hydrogen to go with the fluoride. Hydrogen fluoride, I'll be able to get points from that one. So we all flip, that's bonding. This is on its own. This is on its own. Pass our hands. Moment of truth. Ooh, I got lucky. Okay. I have a potassium ion, a positive, that I'll be able to bond with this hydroxide and balance those out. This one though is going to just be an extra leftover because these, remember, will be discarded. I'm not going to use those. So we'll discard those. Uh, this person here is probably going to want to keep this noble gas. We'll discard these. And over here we're looking for a negative. We did find one. We can make sodium chloride. Those will balance and therefore count for points. Okay, so we've all discarded. Everybody flips their final card. These are being bonded. I could bond with either one of these, potassium hydroxide or potassium chloride. Either way, I'll just put it up here. Actually, no I won't because look at this. Let's talk about scoring for the end of the round. Because this would be a balanced compound, it's a neutral compound, I have one positive, one negative, I get points for this. Four plus three is seven. But if I put this here instead, I would get eight points. So I'm going to do that, and this will be the one that I discard, which I'll do that in just a minute. Okay, so let's pretend everybody is back at zero here, and let's do our end of round scoring. So let's go ahead and do my score first. I have three different noble gases. I have neon, argon, and helium. Let's take a second and look at these cards. I have the atomic number of the element on the card. It's mass, atomic mass, its name, its chemical symbol, and then the points I get. It also tells me a little bit about what it is here. This is a noble gas, okay? So I have three different noble gases. That earns me nine points. Then I have KCl, potassium chloride, that earns me eight points. So I have 17 points from what I've built right there. But notice the noble gases happen to be one of our bonus compounds right now. So that means I get an additional three points because I have all three of the noble gases. So that turns my 17 into 20 points. I've also built KCl, potassium chloride. I do not have sodium chloride, so I only have half of this goal. I have one of the compounds listed on the goal, not both. So I'm going to get the extra two points right there. So I have 22 points for this round. So if I am red, I would be right here. These compound cards do have a little extra information for you. It tells me here that sodium chloride and ACL is standard table salt. KCL is used as a source of potassium in fertilizers and as a sodium-free substitute for table salt. So it gives me a little extra information about 
how those compounds are used. All right, this player over here only has two of the noble gases, so they are not going to get this bonus, but they are going to get five points. This is not a balanced compound, so it's actually going to be discarded. But I do want to hang on to it for just a minute because there's something else I can show you about that. All right, so we have five points from our two noble gases. This compound is neutral, so we get the six points for that. This, they have 11 points. Okay, now let's say we had uh, just a single positive here, so this would balance. Here we go. Let's switch this out for a minute. We'll pretend this is what we had. This would be balanced because we have one positive, one negative. So they would get six points in addition for this molecule. But we also now have the acid and base goal. In order to get the acid and base goal, I have to have, it's a neutralization reaction, I have to have a positive hydrogen, a single hydrogen in one of my compounds, and a single hydroxide ion in another compound. So those would neutralize, forming water and a salt. Since I have hydrogen in one of my compounds, hydroxide in another one, I get this four point bonus. So if we imagine this is what's happening over here, we'd have five from these two noble gases, plus six is 11, plus six more is 17, plus four is 21. That would put them right here. And then finally, this player over here would have six, plus seven, because all of their compounds are neutral, is 13, plus seven more is 20. And they do have the NaCl, they made sodium chloride. They don't have potassium chloride though, so they're just gonna get the two points, so 22. So we'd be sharing this spot right here. And this would be round one. So at the end of round one, we've got our points here. We will discard these compound cards. They're no longer going to be used in this game. We put out three new compound cards as our goals. And then we're going to take and shuffle all of these cards back into the deck of element cards because they can be part of the rest of the game. So I have to reshuffle, redealate out eight cards to each player. Oops, there's some more. And start over. So this is one complaint I have about this game is it just takes a little while since you have to shuffle three times per game. That's kind of a pain. Um, technically, in my opinion, we could have used the deck that was sitting right here to go ahead and play round two. We've often done that. And then we'll shuffle before round three. So that's a way to minimize your shuffling a little bit and seems to work out fine for the game, even though you will be missing anything that you used in that first round. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the advanced way to play this game. So this, my game includes the radioactive expansion cards and it has some elements that make the game a little more interesting. So in this case, we're going to deal each player nine element cards rather than eight. And each player is also going to get three of these tiles, three action tiles. So at any time during the game, I can use these first two. So I can go ahead and use my select two if I wanna keep two cards from my hand instead of just one at any point. So I would just turn this face down, announce that I'm using it. I'd keep two of the cards from the deck, but if you think about it, the next player is gonna be short a card since I've kept an extra. So I just take from the element deck to replace that extra that I took. And this will stay face down for the whole game. Each of these, re uh, each of these action tiles can only be used once per game unless there is a way you get to flip one back over and then you could do it twice. But other than that, it's just once. This action tile allows me to take from the center. So in addition to keeping one from my hand, I can also select one of these center cards and then they're going to be placed, replaced at the beginning of each round. 
So while these are used once per game, unless they're allowed to be flipped back over, these are replaced at the end of each round. This other action tile, Reaction, is going to be used after we've all selected our cards, we've discarded the two final cards that aren't being used, but before the scoring. So what the Reaction tile allows me to do is any cards that I have saved and put down in front of me, I can rearrange them. So if there are things I've bonded that I want unbonded or didn't bond and now I want them bonded, I can change that. And I can also take one of the center cards or I can take from the discard pile. So these add some fun elements to the game. The other things that are different in this game, we have some new types of cards added. So transition metal cards, here's gold, manganese, copper, and iron. Transition metal, car or transition metal cards are fun because they have two different charges I can work with and I can flip them to use either charge. This one has a three, positive three or just a positive one. I can flip them and use either charge at any time. Polyatomic ion cards such as ammonium, nitrate, chlorate, peroxide, carbonate, and sulfite, these work just like any other card once I, when I bond them and I have them a neutral compound, they'll count for points, just like any other card, but they have the additional bonus of allowing me to flip over one of my used action tiles. So I've, if I have used these, I can choose one to flip back over so that it could be used again during the game. Now radioactive atom cards, we have plutonium, francium, uranium, Thorium. Okay, radioactive cards work very differently than others. So if you notice, they don't have any positive or negative charge on them. So what's going to happen is if this is the card that I decide to keep, then when we flip them over, I have to look and see if any other players played a radioactive card on that turn. If this is the only one, I'm just going to leave it face up in front of me. If two were turned over on that turn, I rotate it 90 degrees. If three or more were revealed on that turn, I flip it face down. And so that's going to tell me how many points it will score at the end of the round. If it's face up, I get two points in a three to four player game, three points in a five to seven player game. If it's 90 degrees rotated, I don't get any points in the three to four player game, but I do hang on to it. In a five to seven player game, I'll get one point. If it's face down, in the three to four player game, I don't get any points. In the five to seven player game, I actually get a minus one for that. Now we do not shuffle these back in. We're actually going to keep them because later at the end of the game, I'm going to add up the radioactive decay I have on each of my cards. These two are both five, this one is four. So I'm going to add up the radioactive decay I have on my cards and compare it to everybody else. And so whether I have the most, second most, third most, or least, and depending on whether there are three to four or five to seven players, I will earn points or possibly lose points if I have the least for my radioactive decay cards. But it, it can be a big bonus because I can earn nine or 13 points if I do have the most, depending on the number of players. So those add a lot going on in the game when we play this amped up level. So we play three rounds of the game and the player with the most points wins. So I like that this game is not too complicated. It is supposed to take about 20 to 30 minutes to play. It's recommend, recommended for ages eight and up. And you can play with two to seven players. So that's a big range of flexibility of how many people you need to play. So it really makes chemistry accessible for even young kids. And mine have been playing now for several years, so I would say that age eight plus is pretty accurate. When you start playing the more complicated game, you'll need to make sure they're used to it before that. But it really, because everything is coded for you, it allows them to play, even though they may not understand everything that's happening behind the scenes with the chemistry, right? But it it's a great introduction. It gets them familiar with the names of these molecules and they can start to learn some things about this, like 
Sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are strong bases mixed with fats to make soap used in the process to turn trees into paper and also used in agriculture to correct soil, soil pH. So they start to learn about these things and recognize the names of the elements and become familiar with their the charges of their ions and how they the ions will bond to form a neutral compound. So it really starts to get them familiar with the language and ideas of chemistry before they've even studied it. But if you do have an older child studying chemistry, it's a great way to kind of help them see it happen, see it in action a little bit, become more familiar with those concepts, and have fun playing a game while reviewing a little bit of chemistry. So it, to me, it's an impressive amount of science that they fit into a fairly simple game, an accessible game, that's actually kind of fun to play. So that's the game of ION. I hope it looks interesting to you. Our family really enjoys it, and you can learn a little bit of chemistry while having fun. Some extra ideas, if you want them, to throw a little bit of silliness into this game. One is for those noble gases. If you lay a noble gas down in front of you, or if you have the most noble gases in a round, you get to wear a crown. Ta-da! Another idea inspired by Throw Throw Burrito, if you happen to have any of those unmatched cards at the end of a round, so you know how if you have an ion that's say plus one, you have to have a minus one ion to neutralize it, right? To form a neutral compound. And you have to discard that card if you haven't found one. So another fun idea is for as many cards as you discard, players get to throw a soft ball like this foam ball or this beach ball at you for every card you are discarding. Also remember, in the center of the game, we have the three goal cards, and you get bonus points if you meet any of those goals at the end of the round while you're scoring. So when you are adding up your score, you're showing other players, look, I made this molecule and th this compound and this one, and you met one of the goals, goal, like you're at a soccer game. You can yell that out, it makes it more fun. And then finally, just since we're playing a science game and it has to do with bonding these different atoms and chemical reactions and all sorts of things like that, you can have all players wear safety goggles. These are some terrible ones I can hardly see out of. You can have the cool ones too. We've got these that are, maybe you can consider these the cool kind of safety goggles. They're also pretty dirty, a little dusty. Anyway, you can wear safety goggles during the game, you can have the player with the least or most points wear them all the way through the following round. You could just have the goggles on when the acid and base card is out there or if you meet that goal. So incorporating safety goggles into the game is another just fun, silly way to make it more fun. So I don't know what kind of players you have. Maybe that would make the game more fun. Maybe they would refuse to play altogether if you did those, but just some silly ideas for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, like or subscribe. See you next time.